You want those perfect vocals, but you can't seem to get it right. You're, you're over compressing, you're, you're under compressing, or who really even knows what else. So how about we fix that? So here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna explain what this technique is that we're gonna talk about, the reason behind why myself and really every other professional producer mixer I know uses it, and then I'm gonna show you examples on one of my own tracks I recently released so you can hear a real world example. Let's do this. The technique we're gonna be talking about is called serial compression. And while I know that sounds super fancy, you're gonna be telling all of your friends about it. Really all this means is a series of compressors working together. So you can see in my vocal chain here on this particular track, that I have more than one compressor on the same vocal track. So let's talk about the why. And this is really important to know why you're doing something rather than just having someone on the internet tell you something and then just taking it as a fact. I mean, that never happens, right? The idea is quite simple. Serial compression is used to allow for more compression without the negative consequence or negative effect of over compression. I know that might sound a little counterintuitive because you know, if you're using more compressors, doesn't that result in more compression, which then results in something being over compressed? No, actually no. The reason we're using more than one compressor is so that each compressor only has to work a small or medium amount, which results in a pleasant compression, which then is sent to another compressor, which then adds another moderate amount of compression, which results in, again, a more pleasant compression as well. But when you look at the actual amount of reduction that's happening, it's the same as if we were to slam it with just one compressor, which would actually sound over compressed. So let me show you what I'm actually talking about. Let's take a look at this vocal that we're looking at and use just one compressor on it. I'm gonna apply around somewhere between eight and nine dB of compression. We're gonna hear how it sounds with and without compression. So here's without the compression first. It's like seeing a friend. Wishing it'll never end, it still feels like home. Now here's with just one compressor hitting at about eight to nine dB of reduction with a ratio of four to one, which is pretty standard on vocals. What I want you to really listen to is the ducking that happens on the vocal. You're gonna notice the compressor really slamming down on it. It's gonna be pretty aggressive ducking. It's like seeing a friend. Wishing it'll never end, it still feels like home. Now let's look at using two compressors together where each compressor is only compressing around 5 dB each. I believe the second compressor is hitting a little lower, maybe like three. So we'll have an even comparison with a total of around 8 dB of reduction, the same as that first example I gave you. It's like seeing a friend Wishing it'll never end It still feels like home but not like it used to. Notice how this actually sounds less compressed, but also sounds more pleasantly compressed, even though we are applying the same amount of compression as the over compressed example. Again, the whole point here is that we can actually apply more compression without the negative effect of over compressing. And I think you'll agree that that first example of the one compressor hitting that, you know, eight between eight and nine dB of reduction, I mean, in my opinion, it's, it's definitely over compressed, but that serial compression example is sounding much more natural. Now, of course, I'm not gonna say you can't hear the compression because you, you certainly can, but it works very well. Now, let me give you an analogy that I think will help. It's gonna sound a little weird, but I want you to hear me out, okay? So let's say you have a cup, okay? And you wanna fill this cup with water. If you fill the cup all the way to the very top, that water is still contained in the cup, but if you were to make any you know sudden movements or whatever, it's gonna spill all over and make a big mess. But if you have it only you know halfway full, it's at a comfortable amount. You can you know easily move around, you have no fear of making a mess. So let's imagine that the cup is our compressor. The water going into the cup is the audio that's actually going into the compressor. If you push a compressor all the way to the limit of what sounds, let's say, still okay, but you're borderline over compressed, that's like filling the cup all the way to the top. No, you haven't made a mess yet, but if you were to have a more dynamic part coming into that compressor, water into the cup, just a couple more drops, it's not gonna sound good. That's like making a sudden movement which spills the water out. But let's just say instead now you have two cups and you have a tube that's connecting them together. When you fill that first cup halfway up, it's now gonna spill water into the second cup and now start filling the second cup up. So we now have two cups that are half full, meaning we actually have the same amount of water as the first cup that was entirely filled, which was almost too much and borderline, right? Because it's gonna spill out. But now since we have two cups handling the water, they are each only half full full, but yet we, we have the same amount of water as if the first cup was entirely filled. This is essentially what's happening with serial compression, in a way. Obviously, this is not a perfect analogy, but it gets the point across. Your first compressor is only working a moderate amount that is comfortable. It's usually, for me, that's around 3 to 5 dB of peak reduction, and that's just a ballpark. You ultimately need to use your own ears, and then it moves over to the second compressor in the chain, which then applies another three to five dB of compression. Now, in some cases, I may push that second compressor a little harder so I get more of the 
color of the compressor so I'm not just using it for reduction but I'm also using it to add some color into the sound like some saturation. And in some cases, like in this example that I showed you, the second compressor is actually doing less. It's just doing a more gentle compression to tamper down some of the peaks. And this really depends on the situation and it comes down to personal taste and honestly, just experience. The only way to get good at this is to do it regularly and to really get the practice in. So let me actually show you in the DAW how I practically go about doing this, what settings I typically use and how I get it all working. And as a side note, if you want a fully systematized approach to not only mixing, but also producing music, you should check out my course, Producer Accelerator. There's over 400 students right now who are making huge moves in their own production. So if you want that step-by-step, -step, check it out in the description. I actually break down every aspect of this very song we're looking at in the course. All right, so we have Logic open. Doesn't matter what dial you're using, and really it doesn't even matter so much what actual compression plugins that you're gonna be using. So what I'm gonna do is take this vocal that I was originally looking at. It's like seeing a friend. Wishing it'll never end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new track so we can start completely fresh here. And this will be our example starting completely from scratch. It's like seeing a friend. Wishing it'll never end. So that's the example with absolutely nothing on it. So if you look at the original track here, I have a game plug in the, at the front that's actually just adding a little bit of gain just to give me a little bit more since I had recorded it a little bit quiet. And I have some channel EQ, compression, smooth operator, and a de-esser. So what I'm gonna just focus on for now is just the compression. We're not gonna look at any of the EQ or de-essing or any of that because I just wanna stay focused on compression. So the very first thing that I would do is add a more neutral sounding compressor in the front. So for those of you Logic users, I think the most neutral sounding compressor within Logic is this Platinum Digital. So then what I would do is set this to a ratio of four to one on the ratio knob. This is very standard for vocals. And then the threshold is where we're gonna start actually having uh, the biggest difference made in terms of when it actually starts to kick in. So we'll start messing with this until I get about a top uh, compression level of five dB. So I'm looking at this little dial right here. I want the needle going to no more than five dB at, at the hardest point. It's like seeing a friend Wishing it'll never end It still feels like home And so you can see that when I sing that still feels like home, it's going a little bit higher. I, I think I'm okay with that. It still sounds nice and it kind of just pushes it down a little bit more. So we'll leave it right there. So again, ratio and threshold are pretty much the two main things that you're gonna to wanna to be focusing on. And so that is the very first compressor, okay? So let's go ahead and pull up another one, which usually what I'm doing for my second one is some sort of a 2A compressor. So usually I'm gonna go into the native instruments and my favorite is their VC2A, which looks like this. So basically what's happening is the audio is running through this compressor right here, and after it has run through this compressor, it's gonna come in right here at the input level, right here. It's gonna go all the way through, and then on the output, it's gonna come out, and it's gonna go back in to this compressor and then go back out. This compressor is a little bit different, the 2A. All it has is the gain knob and the peak reduction. It's gonna squeeze on it. It's like seeing a friend. So this is where, for me, I feel like you can start adding a little bit of volume. So let's go ahead and put reduction to 40 and just see what happens. It's like seeing a friend. Wishing it'll never end. So you can see here, it's only doing about one dB of compression at that point. Obviously, once we get to the louder section, it's gonna be more. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just push the gain a little bit. It's gonna give us a little more volume, and then I'm also going to push the compression. It's like seeing a friend. Wishing it'll never end. It still feels like home. So that sounds great. So just again, to show you the example kind of before and after, before with no compression. It's like seeing a friend. Wishing it'll never end. Versus after. It's like seeing a friend. Wishing it'll never end. It still feels like home. So obviously it is louder. That's the first thing I would say is obviously the signal's louder, but part of what compression allows us to do is we can actually push it a little bit louder. It's gonna compress it down and it allows you to actually get more volume out of it because since you have squeezed the dynamic range down at the loudest point, this, the loudest point is now not as loud. It actually allows you to turn the volume up overall a lot more, which is gonna give you vocals that have a lot more presence, that stand out and that feel a lot more present within the mix. And so again, this is all all I've done on this vocal is just add these two compressors and it's already sounding so much better. So what I wanna do now is very quickly show you what this vocal actually sounds like in the context of the entire track. I'm gonna start back, I'm gonna back up just a little bit so you can actually see the beginning of verse two. So I'm gonna be using the original vocal, not the one that we just used, but you're gonna again see the basically the exact same thing. It's like going back home, back to where I belong. It's like seeing a friend. 
wishing it'll never end. It still feels like home. So you can hear that sounds really stinking nice right there within the mix. Now, if you want more tips and tricks that pro producers are using to get their production sound that much better, you should check out this playlist right here. See you soon.